Hello from quarantine and welcome to my video. Hello, this is Editing Grace and I just want to apologize for the decision I made to wear a white shirt against a white background. I look like a floating head. I'm going to be showing you guys how I made my 1860s ball gown bodice for my 1860s ball gown project, which I was originally going to wear to prom, but then prom might be cancelled because of this whole coronavirus thing. Which is super great. It's, it's not great. But there are worse things, like, you know, getting the coronavirus. But seriously, I hope you all are doing okay, hanging in there, taking care of yourselves, all that stuff. And I hope everyone's staying healthy too. Wash your hands, don't touch your face, all that jazz. You want to know something fun? This video is actually special because my teacher's going to be watching it. It's for an independent project that we're supposed to do over quarantine. It's optional, but I decided that I was going to make a video, and if I was going to do that anyway, I might as well receive school credit for it. I cheated the system. But one of the requirements of that thing was that I do research, and like always, I need to present information on the garment I'm making before I make it. So let's get into that. I am not going to be discussing the entire history of bodices, because that would take a really long time, and we don't have time. Actually, we have a lot of time. But we don't want to spend the time talking about it, we want to spend the time making the thing. So I'm going to start at the beginning of the 19th century with the Regency period. A fashionable Regency dress would have an empire waistline, which meant the waistline hit just below the bust. This, like many things in the Regency era, was inspired by classicism and Greek and Roman fashions. More reserved styles, like higher necklines and longer sleeves, would be worn during the day, while short sleeves and lower necklines were reserved for evening wear. This is a trend we see throughout the 19th century. By the mid-1820s and 1830s, the waistline began dropping more to its natural position, and sleeves got wider and wider. By the mid-1830s, crin horsehair and buckram previously used to support sleeves were unable to accommodate the sheer size of the gigantic Romantic era sleeves. Supports made of cotton-covered whalebone or feather-stuffed pillows began to be used. Needless to say, 1830s fashion was pretty wild. In 1836, slimmer fitting sleeves began to come into fashion, and throughout the 1840s, the fullness of the sleeve began to move down the arm. Lower cut gowns were still designated for evening wear. The 1840s and 1850s were pretty much a transitional period into the 1860s stylistically. The sleeves got narrower and less voluminous, and the shoulders began to slope more. In the 1850s and 60s, flared pagoda sleeves became popular. Many sleeves also closed at the wrist to allow them to be tighter. During the 1860s, the waistline moves up slightly from its natural position. For casual day wear, sometimes blouses and shirt waists were paired with skirts instead of matching bodices. During this time, dresses began to appear in a new array of bright colors due to the invention of more synthetic dyes. This meant that people with less wealth had access to bright colors. Previously, such vibrantly dyed clothes were only available to a wealthy few. Muted colors came into fashion instead and were seen as more respectable and reserved. Light colors like pastels were considered appropriate for evening wear. The neckline of an 1860s bodice would be open, and the bodice would have short puffed sleeves. Bodices were often trimmed with a collar called a bertha, and closed in the back with hooks or eyes or lacing, which was more common. The lacing used hand-sewn eyelets instead of metal eyelets, which were possible at this time, but the hand-sewn ones look a little nicer and are less noticeable. Now let's make the bodice. For this project, I used the 1860s ball gown bodice pattern by Truly Victorian. I started as one should with any relatively complicated project and made a mock-up out of a cheap fabric. So here's the mock-up for the bodice. It looks pretty good. It's a little bit loose in front and then at the back, I don't know if you can see this, the, um, it's not big enough in the shoulder area, so I'll need to fix that, but then other than that, it looks pretty good. I made some notes on what I have to change, and now it's time to cut it out of the fabric. For the fashion fabric, I have a purple polyester satin with a white chiffon overlay. For the interlining, there's white denim, and then for the lining, 
I have fabric with little unicorns on it and rainbows and candy and lightning bolts and hearts and stars. So no one will see that part, so it can be whatever I want, and I chose that. I then cut out my pieces from all the different fabrics. Please excuse the mess in the room, I'm not very organized, and I don't keep my room very nice because I'm just gonna mess it up anyway with more sewing projects. For the outer fabrics, I added half an inch to the back so that it would close better and be a little bigger and also added half an inch to the top and bottom edges because I intended to fold them over and fell them down and that would keep it from getting too bulky. The chiffon was pretty delicate and I didn't want to have to trace on it, so I took the pieces I cut out of the satin, put them directly on it, and then cut around them. Then I pressed all the pieces flat. I've basted all the pieces together using a basting stitch to keep them from separating while I'm trying to sew them, and it also marks out the seam allowance on both sides so I can see about where I'm trying to sew. Next I sewed the darts and then sewed all the pieces together. like something. Yay! I'm going with something different for the back because it would be too small if I did it the way it's supposed to go. What was originally supposed to happen is it would fold over like that and then this would get tucked under and it would just have eyelets down here. But what I've done is I've cut it so it just goes down like the front and then I'm gonna just fold over a little bit of the edge so it looks like that. It'll be double folded. Um, and then hopefully it will be big enough. I pressed the seam allowances flat, which I probably should have done after I trimmed them, but I forgot. I don't know why I decided to trim the seam allowances on my bed, because now we'll have to move this before I go to sleep, but I don't feel like worrying about it now. It's like fun confetti, I guess. So I've added some ribbon that will cover the raw edges of the seam allowances and act as boning channels for some boning. And before I put that in, I need to add bias tape to the edges so they don't fall out and to cover this raw edge. So to sew on the bias tape, it's like I did in my corset video, I sew along here with machine stitching folded over and then that part gets stitched down by hand. And the ribbon was stitched in by hand and took approximately forever. I used a whip stitch because I didn't want it to show through on the other side. Like you can see, there's no stitches showing through. It just catches the first layer of fabric. There I am attaching the bias tape. see I finished adding the bias tape. It looks a little sloppy but that's okay because I'm going to cover it with lace. This will just be stitched on with a running stitch really fast. Alrighty I have just finished adding boning to the bodice. It is quarter inch German plastic boning or synthetic whalebone, the same thing I used for the corset. The boning channels are a little wide for it but I think it'll be fine. And for this part, the bones don't curve. I was probably supposed to use spiral steel boning, but I chose this because it's what I had. So I just put a bone here, and then I'm just going to leave it like that. And up here, there will be no structure, but the thing looked fine without it, without any boning. So I think this will be good. It'll maybe make it a little less wrinkly.
And this time I cut the boning with tin snips instead of scissors, which made it remarkably easier. I got these for hoop boning, and they work for that too, but this was very easy to cut with them. Now I'm going to add bias binding, the same process you saw before with this, so just on the top edge. And before sewing down the bias tape, I was sure to trim the seam allowances with pinking shears so that they will um, not fray, and then I'll lay them down flat and sew over them. So it'll look like that. I should probably iron them down before I do that, but I don't know if I'll feel like doing that. It is sleeve time. So here are the sleeve pieces, and what I'm going to do is machine stitch at the widest or the longest stitch length between this very faint point and this very faint point to fit in between two points on here that you also can't see very well because they're marked in pencil and it will gather um, and look all puffy and nice. And then I'm going to do the same thing on the bottom too. Also it took me like 10 years to find the sleeve pieces because I'm very disorganized and my entire room is a mess right now. Probably should have basted the pieces together before I sewed them, but you know what? Being a functional human being and seamstress or sewer, sewist, whatever you want to call it, is overrated, so we're not going to do that. sleeve lining and the sleeve right sides together so that when I sew along the seam allowance and then fold it over it conceals the raw edge on the inside and then creates this and then after that I'm going to take it and fold it over and then sew along the seam allowance this way so that it will create a puffy sleeve and this will get sewn onto the bodice Now I pin right sides together and sew along the seam allowance and then turn it right side out and it will be a sleeve. So I tried sewing the sleeve in. It went pretty bad. Um, the sleeve didn't fit correctly so then I made an adjustment but then that adjustment was wrong and then the layers of fabric started shifting around. So to prevent shifting I um, basted along the outer edge of the sleeve. So. Um, I could keep them from the layers from shifting around too much. And then the sleeve, I just made a quick adjustment to the inside so it's a little bit tighter and will hopefully fit in the arm's eye better. Alright, the sleeves are on. They're by no means perfect, but they will do. I finished the eyelet holes, which means that the base of the bodice is completely done. And I just need to do the Bertha collar and then it'll all be done. I added some ribbon to the back and I think it looks pretty darn good. So these are the pieces for the Bertha collar. This is the front, this is the center front, this is the side, this is the back, center back side. And what I'm going to do is sew them together and make sure it fits on the bodice. I ended up doing the center front seam and then undoing it. to. Um, I did it to try it on the mannequin but then I realized that there are pieces like strips of fabric that are going to join in the middle um, and then the, each side will get folded over and um, it will make a nice like zigzag pattern with a thing in the middle, a seam in the middle, not a thing. <laughs> we use specific words here. Also for the edge I think I'm just going to double fold it and then sew it by machine instead of doing it by hand because it won't be visible with the strips of fabric over it. So I've hemmed the edges of the Bertha collar 
strips and I have a bunch of strips of chiffon here 14 to be exact which is a crap ton and what I'm gonna do is take each one fold it over sew along the top edge and then line them up and put them on the thing then I sewed all 14 of the strips together well not like together but I folded them in half and sewed along the top edge or something Then I pressed them down so they were nice and flat. I pinned the first um, like strip of fabric onto the bertha and I've made sure that both edges like line up so that when I sew them together it will create a nice chevron pattern without any like weird funky gaps or anything. And now I'm going to sew these on. I have the bertha, it's not perfect but it'll do. So what I'm going to do is put it upside down and then sew along here so that when I turn it right side up it'll conceal the seam and just look like it's seamlessly attached. I have the collar um, pinned on. But before I sew it on, I'm going to do that by hand. I'm going to fold over the back sides um, and fell them down so there's no raw edge. And also leave some space um, on the top so that I can put hooks and eyes in and then it'll pin closed when the um, body bodice is laced up. So the Bertha has been sewn on and I added bows to the side and some hooks and eyes to the back to fasten the Bertha with, and it's all done. I'm very excited. Then my sibling took some pictures of me, which was very kind of them, so I could post them on the gram and be hip with the kids. Clay, if you're watching, thank you for the pictures. I really like them. Also, why do I look like I'm five? And that's it for the video. Thank you all very much for watching. Feel free to like and subscribe, and leave a comment if you enjoyed it. Thank you.